Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions 4. Now, this is going to be very strange. I played and recorded this turn, and my microphone wasn't working. So, what you are hearing right now is you are hearing me record my voice and commentary after I'd played the turn, while I am playing the turn. I'm, I'm trying very hard here to match things up, but it's, it's just going to be a little weird, so please bear with me. So, what I'm doing right now is I am going through the event log of the turn. And uh, you can see I cast some spells, my jerk spells, so named because I'm being a jerk to the enemy, such as Blight and Baleful Star, some search spells, Yeah. <laughs> my my commentary was much better the first time around. I'm I'm quite sad that it's gone. But what are you gonna do, I suppose? What are you gonna do? There is a new Satis Prophet. And now we're gonna start looking at the battles, which is much better. It's much easier to do battle commentary. So as you can see, I have my three NCs there, and I have my gelatinous cube, which moves very slow. And, um, spoilers, it will indeed make it to the battle. My sea serpents are there, fighting off the ichthyids. Sea dogs, of course. And here comes the cube. It has an insatiable appetite, and it is trampling through there. Alas. The cube was not meant to be, and he fell at the spear of an Ichthyid. The battle, however, was won. We did lose a sea serpent, we lost some sea dogs, and we lost our cube. Shameful, really. But, moving on, we took out a whole heck of a lot of Ichthyids. The next battle is an assault on Saran Forest, which is a cool battle because you are going to get to see the Storm spell. Now you'll notice the little pentagram up in the corner. I'm clicking on it at some point. There we go. And it creates a rain or snowstorm on the battlefield. It makes flying impossible and shooting difficult. This is great because Arco has these pesky little flying troops, the Icarids and the Pegasus Riders. And so the Storm spell guarantees they stay on the ground and they are not attacking my troops from behind. That was a priestess. So here comes the battle. You know, you can notice random lightning bolts falling around. That is as a result of the storm. And it looked like that one hit one of my mages. That's no good. There's the province defense coming up first. They live so that they may die, and others who are more useful to the cause can live. This is very loud. I will have to adjust this. And you can notice that my griffins are also walking instead of flying, because they too are affected by the storm. Now Thunderstrike is an amazing spell and can do a ton of damage, stuns people nearby, but what I've been noticing is my mages tend to miss pretty badly with it. That one hit, but I just I just I just expected more of it. Maybe it's because I'm hitting ogres and ogres have a lot of hit points, but I, I just remember in Dominions 3 where I was just nailing entire armies with this spell and, and creating huge gaps. I don't know. Excuse me. I was just having a, a drink. Bundaberg Ginger Ale from Australia. It is some great stuff. It's like the nectar of the gods. Like nectar of Ursula. Ew. Yeah, let's forget I, let's forget I said that. And as you can see, we have won the battle. Casualties were nothing. A whole lot of nothing. 20 of their troops did, however, get away. Next, we have a battle in 
Paholotheras. I didn't do it right the first time, and I'm probably not doing it right now. But this is the battle where Jay Lee's army is being attacked. And, well, I don't want to spoil it for you, so we'll wait till after the battle. But you can see I have some Amazons fighting on my side, and some water elementals. Those are from the bottles of living water that I mentioned earlier. You can see the gleaming armor of my elite troops there in the sides. They will wait until they get divinely blessed, and then they will go to the front. They sent a Pegasus Rider to the back, and I'm beginning to notice that my Gudus are a little exposed. Even though they're supposedly in the middle of a giant cube of protecting troops, it's not actually happening like that. They are near the back, and that is not a good thing. They are not yet blessed, but they will be soon. The Blade Wind is a much better ogre fighting spell than the Lightning Bolt of the Thunderstrike. And here they are, yes, they are blessed now. They get Morale plus one, Precision plus two, Fire Resistance plus five, Reinvigoration plus two, and Hit Points plus four. Now, some of these things are not very helpful for my army, but you'll remember now that all of my mages from the capital city, well, from any city, are sacred as well. So the precision plus two and the reinvigoration plus two are very valuable for them because it allows their spells to be more accurate and it allows them to cast more spells. They fight fatigue more effectively. So while this bless is not a very good bless, it is good enough, especially for a nation where most of my mages are sacred. And now my sacred troops are coming in from the sides. And the enemy, rightly, is running for their lives. So let's see. Yes, so now I can tell you, we lost a Gudu. We lost one of our friends. I, I can't even explain to you the tragedy and the sadness that I feel in my heart right now. And I spend the next couple seconds looking over the first part of the battle again to determine who it was that died, I will spare you the agony, friends, and let you know from the beginning, it was Gus. Gus, I apologize. Perhaps you could have been better protected. But please don't worry. There will be a Gus Jr. soon. Dertanian, why couldn't it have been you? Why couldn't it have been you? And there's Gus. Oh, Gus. Ill-fated Gus. Not only did we lose Gus, but we lost his bottle of living water, so the water elemental has also been lost to us. A double tragedy. Income down. Unrest up. General good things. Not. Do people still say not? It was big in the 90s. I... I'm old, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, not old, but... Not young, not hip. Okay, Jay Lee's army. This is when I'm trying to figure out who it was that died. Alas, twas Gus. Gentle Gus. We shall miss you. At least until you are resurrected. Well, I don't mean resurrected in the literal sense. We can do that, of course. But then you'd be a zombie and that would be kind of lame. So we're just going to pretend that, um, well, have it, many of you, probably, maybe a couple of you, I don't know, have read the uh, Steven Erickson books, Malazan, Book of the Fallen, and uh, if you haven't, I don't mind, they're gigantic books, but they're, they're really neat, and in them, there are these uh, people called Wiccans, who are basically like, I don't know, Mongol, Mongols, I guess, and, I mean, that's their equivalent in the real world, but they have shamans who are, they're able to capture their souls in, in these little devices, or, or the souls get picked up in ravens, or something. And so, when a great hero of the Wiccan people dies, uh, a baby is born somewhere to the Wiccans, and the soul of that great hero goes inside them. So, Gus, long story short, buddy, you will be back. In the guise of another. So now I'm looking at my death mages, I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. I'm, of course, casting Blight, because I'm a jerk. And that's what jerks do. 
they blight their enemy's capitals. I have discovered that I have two people who can do blight, and so I'm spreading the love around. Now I believe I'm going to attempt to reanimate a whole lot of undead. My um, efforts are going to be met with a little bit of disappointment, however, as I am down to eight death gems, and so cannot reanimate very much. And yes, I'm going to have to go and do this for every single one of them. Sorry. So yes, death gems are a bit of a premium. I don't seem to have a lot of them. And it's generally because I just started up with death, and so I haven't really been searching sites for death. You may notice that I'm discovering a lot more sites just at random as I'm leading my armies around. This is because the area has already been searched by the enemy, and if the enemy's already discovered a site, we also discover it. However, we don't know what paths the enemy used to search for it. So, we don't know, for example, there could be more sites. Or we could waste our time and search for a site that we already have. So, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but... At this point of the game, you're automating it mostly, so not that big of a deal. As you can see here, I'm starting to mobilize up for my attack on Satis. Spending my money in that area. And so I have the two forts, one to the northeast and one to the southwest. Red Robin is holding court in the northeast, and in the southwest we just have a bunch of Gudus and some Salmes. Now, I'm giving Batman a robe of shadows and a bow of war. This is very thematic. As you know, Batman is a creature of the night. He blends in with the shadows, and so the robe of shadows is perfectly thematic. Makes him ethereal. The bow of war shoots 13 different arrows. But for the length of this Let's Play, we are not going to refer to them as arrows. We are going to refer to them as Batarangs. Unfortunately, they are lethal Batarangs, but what can you do? In this universe, Batman kills. I'm sorry. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but Batgirl, unfortunately, was lost in the previous... Well, not in the previous episode, but prior to it. She was a hero on the uh, hero list, so that was, that was quite of a shame. But she was, of course, a Salme, and Salme are not really made for the battlefield. They can protect, but that only benefits troops whose natural protection is less than 10. And by now, with all of my armored guys, I think it would give them a plus 1 to protection. It's just not quite worth it. Okay, so I'm moving a spy in to the capital, or not to the capital, but to White Peaks, I believe it was, to check for Dinah. And I'm moving another spy to the south to the other castle. I figure that's where they have to recruit their troops from, so it's good to get an idea of what's coming at me. I'm moving Batman and friends out to the west. And that's it, folks. On to term number two of this particular episode. It's a good time for some more ginger ale. And no, I'm not getting any sponsorship money, unfortunately. I just really like the stuff. Okay. So we are storming the field, literally. But my poor griffins are undisciplined, and so they just don't know how to hang back and wait for trouble to find them. Instead, they are going looking for trouble, and they're being hit by my own lightning bolts, and they're generally just getting beat up quite a bit. Meanwhile, we're with the other lightning bolts, we don't seem to be hitting much of anything. I'm, I'm very disappointed. Bulwark knows what he's doing. He's got some hero-grade precision, but the rest of these guys, man, they're just fire and blind. That is a phantasmal wolf. Some One of my air guys must have cast something that brought him... Not entirely sure what. It looks like Phantasmal Warriors are being summoned. I'm just looking to see if my Gudus have fatigue, and yes, they do. That's why they stopped casting the good spells. Oh, the volume! I don't remember it being like this in the game. I wonder somehow if the recording software does this. I, I don't know. 
We lost eight griffins, and that was no good. This is uh, Jay Lee's army in all of its magnificence, and these fools don't have a chance. I do let it run for a little bit just to make sure none of these Pegasus Riders harm any of my Gudus that happen to be near the front line. Spoiler alert, they don't. And the Water Elemental gets a few good hits in as well. The Hornblower definitely avoids being trampled, so good for him. We lost five Spear Guard, and not much else. Saran Forest. We have left, and now that we have left, they are attacking us. What a bunch of jerks. However, I can safely say, and I'm sure as you can by looking at this, that we are going to win. Now check this out. This guy is named Urbaba which sounds like one of the goofy names I would name somebody, but is not. The game came up with that all by itself. Which means that the game has just as corny a sense of humor as I do. Frightening, really. Sea of Woe. Uh, in the original recording, I think I made a cheeky comment about woe upon my enemies, but as you can see, they don't stand much of a chance here. Though they will unfortunately do a number on my sea serpents. Before running away. Now what's funny is these are turtle tritons. And turtles are generally known for moving very slowly. But these guys, well when they're running away from me, they're moving quite fast indeed. We lost a sea serpent. We are down to three. Members of the Blasphemous Cult has erected a statue of basalt. Well, that is not good grammar, but I really miss it when the only heretics I had to worry about were of the naked woman variety dancing in the woods. Basalt statues? Eh, not as interesting. These guys are starving, so I gotta get them somewhere. I don't feel confident enough to take Dinah on head on, but I noticed that her cold dominion is making the river crossable. At least up to the northwest, not to the south or southwest. So I'm going to do that, because that province has a temple in it, and it doesn't appear to be very well defended. I'm putting a token defense force in the areas I just conquered. I believe 11 in both of them. It's because I really don't care if they get conquered again. I'm just trying to piss them off a little bit. Eventually, I'm going to go straight for the castles. Um, oh yes, I was saying that my goal is to go south to get rid of that temple, and then go south again and conquer that province with the fields to deny them a, a source of high population and good income. So that's the strategic plan. I am also now going to move my Gudus from... I, I had them arrayed throughout this giant block of defenders to try to spread them out, but I'm going to move them all to the middle. Because as we saw in the battles, and as we learned at the cost of poor Gus's life, we need to protect them just a little bit better. Alas, poor Gus. We knew thee well. But we shall know thee again. And maybe just to um, say sorry, I might give you a ethereal cloak or something cool like that. Now the funny thing is going to be making sure that this vocal track matches up with the visual track. Otherwise, it's that well hilarity is going to ensue. I'm going to be announcing things before they happen, and uh, good times, good times. I'm setting all these death mages to research for now because I am dangerously low on death magic. However, I have enough earth magic which is what the Blight spell costs to Blight my enemies. I really enjoy doing that. I mean, it gives them unrest, it, it costs money, it's, it's just wonderful. And in a multiplayer game it's even better, because I think since I'm playing against difficult AIs, the computer has benefits. It gets extra gold, extra resources, whatever, but a human would not, so this is a pretty mean spell to cast on another human player during multiplayer. 
And it's anonymous as well, so they don't know who cast it. Again, not too useful against the AI, but against the another person, a lot of fun. And now we are going to be searching for more knowledge of the Dark variety, because we need more Death Gems. I'm building an undead auxiliary army to come and help out Jay Lee. Can't quite say what she thinks about that. Uh, up until this point, the Enkidu have been pretty above board, and so I don't know how they're going to feel about the corpses of their enemies joining them in battle. And I say their enemies because if you actually look at the Long Dead, they are roughly human-sized and uh, so could not be Enkidu. So at least we are not animating the corpses of our family members and friends. Which is something to be said, I guess. And, oop, the turn looks like it's over, so thanks for watching, folks. Goodbye.